Hello and welcome to another Free Code session. My name is Jason Bach and I'm still in a mood to record. I'm still on a roll. still feel like doing some extra things. And I realize I still have one bug in the list. There's some enhancements or things I'm calling features, but I want to get the thing that is a bug fixed. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this or subsequent videos. One thing I did want to talk about, I think I alluded to this in a previous episode, is this idea of removing all casts. So right now, the generated code does this. You can see that we always do these casts here because the method handler method is, I think it's just typed as an object or something like, or maybe just a delegate. And this one we have to cast to a specific handler information. And I thought, and I've had this thought before, but I thought, couldn't we do something where we have this generated, some tuple, arbitrary tuple size, of all the things we need for validations for whatever is the first member identifier. And then we just look through and say, are there validations? And there's no casting involved because everything is exactly as it should be. So, okay, that sounds interesting. I need to do a fair amount of performance testing to make sure that this would actually be in any way advantageous to do so. Of course, there, even if it would be a runtime, there is a cost involved at compiler time because I'm going to have to generate, at least I think I'm going to have to generate, a bunch of things like this where what I'm trying to do with verifications and failures and and I think I stopped the notes here, but I... I I would have to do things that I think actually pass in stuff like this and do it without actually having casts involved in, in any way, shape, or form. So is the cost of doing a cast at runtime more than just, is it more or less than generating the code to not have casts? Because it sounds like, oh, not having casts, that would be awesome. That would be a wonderful thing. But... I'm not sure that that would actually help. Again, if you think about it with a mocking framework, if you're using one, typically the intention is you're only going to call a member once. I'm not saying that people don't write tests that do multiple invocations of a mocked member. From what I've seen, that's usually what people do. And so is the cost of doing this where I don't have to do any more code generation much faster and and less memory intensive than suddenly starting to do things where I have to do more code generation and potentially do more computation and CPU usage and allocations just to get to that point. If this was like a general proxy framework where you don't know how many times something would be called, then I would say yes. Then I would say the cost is pr probably quote unquote worth it. I have to see. But this is an idea that I have in my notes section. I have no plans of doing anything with this yet. I just wanted to get these down to make sure that I actually did not forget these. So this is the issue I'm going to be looking at. And after I thought about it for a little while. I think the issue is not with these. Okay, if I just had one method that just had a string and then over like a nullable string and then overrided with a string or vice versa, I don't think it matters. I think that would be okay because I looked for my method matcher, which I will do now. Not mather, matcher. Oh, you've got results. I know you've got results. Come on, Visual Studio. I know when I record, sometimes, you know, most of the time I cut things out because I'm like, yeah, I can't be that slow. You know, well, there we go. I mean, come on. It, I know I have a method match somewhere. It's just like, you're kidding me. It's going to take that long to find it where I could probably just do it myself. And again, I, I know it's because I got a lot of things running at this point in time. So, but now I actually have to figure out where in the world 
is this method matcher thing that I created. Oh, you're going to do this to me, aren't you? I mean, th this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is just ridiculous. Come on. Method. There, I saw it. It was there. There we go. It took you just like five hours to find. Oh, and of course, that's really not the thing I'm looking for. I'm looking for where is this actually being used? It's in a method match. Match. There we go. Method symbols extensions. Of course, it's not. That's the enumeration. It's not the thing that we pass in. Okay. So to do a match on methods, we say if the names are different, that they don't match. If the type parameter is different, we don't match. If the length of the parameters doesn't match, it's. But then when we finally get into the parameters, you'll notice that we just are looking at the types for most of the cases without a nullable annotation because that doesn't override. That doesn't, you know, you can't have, for example, if I go to the trusty sharp labs and I do sharp lab and I say something like public class base class and I have a public virtual void foo that takes a string of a of course it doesn't do anything with it and then we have public class subclass that derives from base class and we want to do a override of foo okay if we do this actually that's that's not even what i want to do that's giving you the warning that's the warning that i'm running into but that isn't even what i wanted what i really wanted to do was just having, they don't even have to be virtual. You can do this. So, come on. Like I can have an int of A here and that's okay. That's a valid over, over not override, overload. But what I can't do is that. That's not, that doesn't differentiate. Okay, with the same parameter types. So, that's why I do this check. And there's some other stuff in here with ref kinds and out and ref and stuff like that. Um, or if one param is not another param or something like that. There, there's a couple of checks here. But what I think I need to do is put in here if I'm a pointer type or I'm an array type because those you actually have to look at the element type. And there's some code in here, maybe I'll run into it as I try to fix this, that I know I've done things like if it's a pointer type, then do a pointer type symbol. There's an array type symbol as well, I think. So we're going to have to add other things in here, like to say, do a, a switch on the self type. I, I don't think, here's the thing. I don't think you can do a switch on self or two more than one thing, unless you put them in a tuple. I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm wondering if there's a way to do a pattern match on this that might be kind of elegant, but we'll get to that. So I obviously have tests around this, right? I mean, I would never write code without tests around this. <laughs> okay, well, I've got, uh, that's not what I was hoping for. There we go. So match, 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 match. Because we have to do this thing where we want them in different classes and, and stuff like that because the matching algorithm doesn't care about what type it's from. We're just purely looking at the shape of the, the method, if that makes, if th that's a good way to think about it. So I wanna put in here, yeah, you can see in here, we already have this. This we've already caught, which is, this is an exact match and that's exactly what we want. But what we wanna do now is put in, I think it's all about the arrays. It's all about the arrays. Match with methods differ by parameter array type. I'll just call it that. So what we want is something like this and that. That's the case we've run into. And I think we probably also want something, we, we want to say these are exact. And I bet, let me just run this right now. And as you can see, it fails because it says the method matches none. They don't match. But they do. They definitely do match. If I come back over here and let's make a string, okay. Now that one went away, but as soon as I do, no, not that, that, again, we run into the same issue because it thinks it's the same. So 
this has to change. If I do something like a pointer by parameter pointer type, okay? So now if I have a an int and an int that, what would you think that would be? So <laughs> well, let's see. And, and of course, this can start to get very uh, interesting as we say in the vernacular. If I do that, now it's gonna say, yeah, uh, can you just say unsafe? I, f I forgot how you, can you just say unsafe class here? Unsafe, not unsage, there we go. But that's okay. That's actually okay. So if I run this, these shouldn't be exact. These should be none. Ah, uh, yes, because we don't, you know, there's no way you can make a a nullable pointer type. <laughs> so so we would actually handle this. I just want to make sure, do we, ha do we have a pointer type check here? Return type, parameter type, parameter match, parameters, params, yeah. Ma trying to figure out this matching and overriding and overloading is just a nightmare. I've mentioned this many, many times and it is always just a just throw up in my mouth thing. You know, that there there are times that I think Eiffel did it right, which is you don't allow overloading. You every method is named differently, which of course a lot of people would just flip out about. But there would be <laughs> there would be a lot of things that would just go away if you did that. Now let me back up here. Let me just make sure I've got my head around this. If I do this, no, I, what? okay. And then I do this and that should be, fields cannot, have, it's not a field. What in the world? I swear sometimes, I mean, maybe I just typed this in wrong, but so yeah, sometimes I feel like sharp lab just goes bonkers. So yeah, same parameter type. Now, if I do this or that, doesn't matter. It's it's the it's the nullability. Now if I do that, but then I put you know that in there. So multi-dimensional arrays. You know, but it's not just an array. Notice that this is okay. That's perfectly fine. So we've also got to say if it's the same multi-dimensional array or array arity or whatever the phrase is. Let's put that in there. Match room methods. Well, okay. Match when methods differ by parameter array type nullability. We also want to have a match when methods differ by parameter array dimensions. Like, you can do this. That's perfectly fine. So that's... I wonder what I do here. These don't match. This should be a none. And they do match because we are... Obviously not comparing the same, well, not there. But somehow we come into this and we say that the type, the fully qualified name, is different than, and that's the thing here. I bet if I, am I in debug mode here? Let's put a breakpoint here. Because if I come into this one, I bet it, the, the fully qualified name says strength, comma, you know, brace, bracket, whatever, but it has that in there. And so that's why it just shows up as being different. But I'd have to be careful because I want to make sure if I run into that case, I just said we had multidimensional and not, well, that's what we have here, that we don't strip off the, 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 the array part because they, they have to be of the same size, right? So like here, we could have a null there and then do two of those. And that should be okay. But as soon as I make them the same dimension, so they have to be array of the same size. Otherwise they don't match. So here, the type is a string that can I get the whole thing here? 
So we get that. Okay, cool. And what do we get for the other parameter? Yeah, so we don't lose. If I say self parameter is type type kind, should say array. Yes. So if I say, let's do some casting magic here. And I put in I array type symbol, cast it as that dot. Does it have a way to say what's the, the dimension of it? I'm not sure. I mean, I can tell it's a type and it'll tell you what the element type is. Let's see what that does. Yeah, so it tells us it's a string. But what we want to know is how many, what's SZ? Zero base, no, that's, we don't care about that. Lower bounds, specify lower position. The length can be less than the rank. Well, what's the lower bounds, uninitialized? Well, that doesn't help. What's the rank? Two. Aha! So if I say other parameter here, it should be one. Okay, so we need to, the type kind needs to be a, well, we could just do if self parameter dot type is I array type symbol self array and self array dot rank rank, ugh, can't talk, is also the same as the other one. Then we can get the element type and yeah, so what I just said. <laughs> so if I say something like if self parameter parameter dot type is I array type symbol self array and other parameter dot type is I array type symbol other per other array and self array dot rank is equal to other array dot rank that yeah and <laughs> what else do we want to add to it? So we know we both we have arrays on both sides they're both of the same dimensions and the self array dot element type with nullable annotations get fully qualified name does not equal what did I copy here other array element type what what I oh yeah take that off there we go else if because I don't think we care about any other cases so we're going through each parameter and the first one Sorry, I, I, I need to go through the logic in my head again. If the first one, if the if the parameter in question, if they're both arrays and they have the same rank and they have the same name for the element type, we would just go into the else if, because this, we're only trying to check arrays. And if they if they are if they are both arrays and they have the same rank but their names for the element type are different, then we have a match of none, I believe. Else if, so the special case we do first. And then we just do the regular thing, which is we look at the type and we say, okay, do what you usually did. Because if they, well, got to be careful here, hold on. Okay, so if they're both arrays and the rank doesn't equal, or... <laughs> These don't equal. Why are you complaining? Use of, oh, oh, fine, I guess, take that off. Okay, so we're saying if it's one of these and it's one of these, there, okay. So we found out that they're both arrays and their ranks don't equal, so that would mean they don't match or their element types don't equal. So that means that the ranks were the same, 
but the element types aren't the same. What does it do for our method matching tests? I'm just curious. Well, one fails. Of course one would fail. Match when methods differ by parameter array type nullability. So here we're saying these should be exact. So what happens here? <laughs> I'm going to have to move on to another next episode because... So what happens? Okay, we skip because that's true. We should have skipped because we have the same two things. Okay. Oh, crap. Yeah, we come into here. That's not what we want. I think what I want to do... If there are arrays, i got to handle them special. So I think I need to do this. If I say if, and now I say here, but this gets pulled up into here. So in the case of an array, we say if this. If that's the case, then we know we didn't match. And so we do that. Okay. So here we're going to say else continue. And the continue breaks out and goes back to the next one. So we're just checking these to see if they're arrays. If they're both arrays, then we will go into this logic. If they're not both arrays, then we just do this. Because if one was an array and one wasn't an array, then we get a none match right away because the nullable annotations, no matter what, you'd have the brackets in there and that just wouldn't work. So I think now we should be able to get this as showing that this is an exact match. Okay, I should have ran all of them here. Okay, they all pass. One more thing before I move on to the next episode. What breaks in all of these tests? I don't know if anything would, but who knows? I, I may have done something really just awful. But once again, I hope this shows the power of unit testing. There's no way I could have done this, not even close, other than just being a better developer, <laughs> but and not making stupid mistakes right away. But to make sure that something that is as complicated as this library is com becoming, and is, the, the possibility of breaking some edge or corner case just starts going up and up and up. And with something like this, I got to make sure that I am not breaking anything that currently exists. Hopefully now this should be okay. I will probably, yeah, I've got this in here and that's saying none because it already would have, but this is saying exact. Well, it's interesting if these all pass, I bet the one here will fail, but for a different reason now, because the generated code is going to say, no, you only have one method. So one fails, it's this one. But look at that. You may go, so what, Jason? But if I keep scrolling through this, equals get hash code to string. And then look at that. This one, the, the one from the base class goes away. And we just pick up the one from the subclass, which is what you should do. If I remember from my notes on the issue here, the subclass. So, I do, so yeah, it does it exactly the way I want it to now. So I'm going to hopefully finish this issue off in the next episode. And, and then we can go on to doing what I would really hope is a simple one. Thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.